got a secret underneath Yeah, she's his naughty little freak She likes to put on a show She likes when he takes good Josh is a very consistent piece of the offense. He's a physical kind of runner. He's very instinctive, you know, really good vision, and he does a good job breaking tackles. Give to Jacobs, hit in the backfield, breaks the tackle, accelerates it on the left sideline. Wow, what a run by Jacobs. That run style, as a game goes on, wears on defenses. So he's everything I thought we were getting. Uh, he's a very big piece of our offense for sure. The Jaguars, meanwhile, have a couple of creatures on defense, Trayvon Walker and Josh Hines Allen. Number 41 Allen lives in the backfield. The two-time Pro Bowler utilizes speed to hunt down quarterbacks, while his wingman Walker uses all of his 272-pound frame to get home. Over the last two dozen games, this duo has combined for three dozen sacks. You know, I think the first thing I see is their D-line. I think they have a really solid uh, pass rush. And uh, obviously, the two edge guys, um, they're, they're both really good players. So um, I think right away, those guys stand out. Their ability to get after the quarterback, it's real. They got two edge rushers that are two of the best in the game. So we've got to play a consistent four quarters against this team. The Packers will look to make it four straight on Sunday, and while the offense is beginning to hit its stride, there's still more out there. Just ask the team's leading receiver, Jaden Reed. I really feel like we're just scratching the surface, really. Like, I don't even think we put a full game together yet, so there's no ceiling for us. We're just going to keep getting better. Welcome to Best of the Locker Room. In the second half of the past four games, the Packer defense is allowing an average of 3.75 points. Here's Xavier McKinney with the secret to that success. We are getting the right adjustments at halftime and um, knowing that, okay, we didn't have the first half that we wanted to have, let's finish the game the right way. We have that mentality of making sure that we play 60 minutes throughout the game and finishing the game the right way and the way that we want it to be seen. According to Pro Football Focus, Evan Williams, a fourth round pick, is the highest grading rookie in the entire league. How is he outperforming all those players drafted before him? For me, it's just been taking, you know, little things from the people that have done it before, you know, the the X's in your room, you know, just guys that have that experience at this level and, you know, see what they're trying to get better at. A lot of it's watching tape, you know, just being self-critical every time you look, you know, at your own film, trying not to just look at the highlights. You got to look at the bad plays too and face them and just try to improve. You know, that's the name of the game, just getting 1% better. Um, and, you know, that's something that I try to do every day. The Packers get the ball at their own 30. 144 left to play, one time out, needing a field goal to win. You know the rest. Here's Jordan Love. It just comes down to making those plays. Um, you know, we practice these two-minute situations every day uh, throughout training camp, throughout OTAs, once we get into the season, you know, once a week we're practicing it. So it's not like it's anything we haven't done before. It just comes down to going out there and making plays and executing, understanding the situation. Do we need to get out of bounds? Do we need to save time? How much time do we have? Things like that is so critical. So everybody being dialed in, being on the same page is imperative. It is good! It is good! May your hammer be mighty. Hey, you're a big ass boy. Well, we're gonna score right here. We're gonna score right here. Believe that. Looking downfield, right for right the left side. Tucker grabs wide open. Tucker grabs tight looking the left sideline to the end zone for the touchdown. Like a gazelle down the sideline. Ha <laughs>
We are so excited for this guest. We are back here on GMFB, and joining us for the first time is a second-year tight end out of Timberlake, South Dakota, who is taking the nation by storm, both with his play and with his positive energy. Packers tight end, Tucker Kraft. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Tucker, it's it's early in Green Bay, and the Packers are coming off yet another big win where you guys beat the Texans in a close one. But the play of the day was the beautiful diving touchdown catch that you had. You have become one of Jordan Love's most reliable weapons and one of the fans' favorite players. What's it been like year number two, and what's it been like getting this offense reacclimated now that Love is back on the field? Yeah, yeah. Uh... It, it all starts with with getting our boys leader back in the mix again and and getting the offense running um, smoothly. Not that there was anything, uh, you know, wrong with uh, Malik. He came in and he did a, a terrific job. Um, but yeah, getting getting Jordan back, getting getting the offense acclimated again to to winning these games. Um, you know, the Texas came in and and they were a good football team and and we. Came came down to the wire. We we won with McManus, but um, it's been great. Green Bay is a wonderful place. Um, I feel feel pretty rooted here now. It's the biggest city I've ever lived in. Um, so, <laughs> pack or rolling. We're gonna try to keep it that way. All right, hey, yo. So, Tuck, I I, I, got, I want you to take a look at something. This is a pretty cool thing. I think you'll appreciate it. You are leading all wide receivers and tight ends in yards after catch so far. Like. This is nuts. I mean, I just want you to appreciate the names here. I mean, there's some really big names there. What makes you so dangerous with the ball uh, in your hands, man? Look at that. You got Jaden and uh, Rasheed Rice and, I mean, Jamar Chase. Like, you you at the top, dog. Yeah, I guess it um, kind of just goes back to the, the high school days playing running back amongst uh, nine on nine football in, in South Dakota. As soon as I catch the ball, I just, you know, I consider myself um, a running back and I, I see you run lanes and, and probabilities and, and how I can use my, my offhand as a weapon. Um, and that's, that's something I really pride myself on too, is, is the yards after catch because it, it juices up the boys, you know, everyone else, you know, they kind of want a piece of the rock and they get their chance with it. And they're going to, they're going to spark some, some juice um, amongst the offense as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, hey, Kraft, this is this is your boy, Akbar. You're talking to. We just met. You can't tell me you're not getting excited about that, man. You see your name up there, man. Yeah. You know you're sitting there to <laughs> mom and pops and, and your bros, and you know what I mean. Like, get excited, man. That's tight. That's nice. Yeah. It's 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 a thrill. Um, <laughs> you know, my first thing as soon as I catch the ball is trying to make the first guy miss. Um, That's what I'm talking I just about. Want to be, I just want to be a ruthless ball carrier. When I get the ball, I want I want people to to worry about me, consider me a liability, you know, in the in the secondary. Um, I just I, I I just I think that people just can't tackle me sometimes, and that's the mentality you got to run with. Ruthless. I mean, we've seen it on the field. It's been such a pleasure to watch you play and with your quarterback. I'm a Packer fan. I won't hide it. So our quarterback, Jordan Love, we've really seen him blossom as a starter, and he's been playing exceptional ball this year. Tell us more what it's like having him in the locker room. What kind of dude is Jordan Love? Yeah, Jordan. Jordan's a leader. Um, you can tell it's natural when you're around him, too, because just the, the calmness that he presents himself with. You know, even when we're down in a game, like the poise and the not necessarily like – in a bad way, but the the spirit he's able to still play with, he's still going to put the ball out there because he trusts us as playmakers, um, and and we we trust him. We're gonna we're gonna go out there and and, and get it. But um, yeah, Jordan Jordan's a lead from the front guy, um, and you know I'm sure glad. Like I said with with Xavier, like I'm sure glad he's on our side. I'd hate to have to have our defense match up against our quarterback. Gladly I get to see it in practice every day, but. Um, yeah, Jordan is an exceptional quarterback and a leader. You know what I love about Tucker? What's that? Is he really lights up when he talks about other people. When he talks about himself, very modest. <laughs> you know, so, you know, kind of feeding off of that, Tucker, you know, Pac Packer fans are some of the best in the NFL. What's it like oh, having yeah. them? And do you have any memor like, memorable, memorable stories that you could share with us? Yeah, um, Packers fans are great. Um, just uh, the traditions that are rooted in uh, Lambeau Field and – 
how historic of a place it is with, you know, the Lombardi trophy and everything amongst that. Um, it's just a, a pleasure one to be able to play in the league, but two to, to start my career and hopefully stay the rest of my career in, in green Bay as a Packer. Um, just this place is special and the fans are special. You know, we have, we have the celebratory Lambo leap and, and even our, our kicker got to get in on it this last weekend, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, this, this place is special. The, the locker room environment, even it it's, um, people come here from other teams and tell us how good we got it. So I'm just, uh, positive amongst that. Look, I, 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 I know I'm sitting here in New York and my co-hosts are in LA and it comes off as patronizing or condescending. And we're like, he's from a small town in South Dakota, but the population is 500 from where you grew up. And now you're in the NFL on the biggest of stages. That is a massive leap. Can you take us into Timberlake, South Dakota and tell us what it's like in that town and give your hometown some love and what really contributed to helping you become the man you are today? Yeah, um, I, I can't say enough good things about the place I came from, um, how all those those roots are still instilled in me. And, um, you know, I come from a small town and, you know, tragedy struck me and my family when I was young. My dad passed away. But I had so many people from the community, like the positive things about being from a small town is we, I had I had so many great men and women, you know, everyone coming together to help support me and my family through what we were going through. And that support never stopped. I, I continued to grow into the athlete I am today. And I have people constantly you know, reaching out from from my hometown or or people just being extremely supportive and asking nothing from me just because they they just want to be along on on the ride and i hope that throughout my career i can continue to give love back to to my hometown and that's why um you know i was i was honored um as a to be become a, a member of the tribe that i grew up on the shine river sioux tribe and i wear that patch on my helmet you know just as like a you know a, a beacon of of thanks towards towards all the people that I've, I've got to interact with and all the people that have shown me support along, along this way. Um, I'm just very blessed. Really. Well, well, Tucker, thank you for sharing that story, man. It takes a village and clearly Timberlake, South Dakota has been that village for you. Um, you know, I, I want to also too give a little shout out because I know you got a birthday coming up week nine and you're going to be going up against the, the Detroit Lions. Um, you, got a birth, you got a birthday dance uh, for us on, with, a, with a touchdown? I guess we'll have to find out. I'm not really a big planner. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm just as surprised I got in the end zone as you guys. So uh, the whole yards after catch thing can be crazy sometimes. But uh, – you know, maybe maybe I'll just give a, a big uh, birthday spike. All right, I'm gonna be that? watching. I'm gonna be watching, man. I'm gonna be watching. Well, we are all celebrating this weekend for National Tight Ends Day. What does that mean to you? And just how wonderful is it that we get to celebrate your position? And do we need to ask? Is this a guaranteed touchdown that I'm hearing then, or maybe an angry run for Kyle Brandt then for National Tight Ends Day from you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll we'll have to pick between the two. Hopefully, both <laughs> one resulting in the other, but. Uh, yeah, national national tight end day. Just the tight end position in, in general. It, it's the way it's changed throughout the league um, over the last few decades. Even um, it's just a very versatile position. We're asked to do a lot, and to have our own holiday just feels like uh, a little maybe thank you from the, from the NFL from sponsoring us so much. But it's a it's a special position, um, special guys for sure in every tight end room. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a great time for sure. Tucker, real quick, as we wrap, it's National Tight Ends Day. I know that you guys all you know, have this camaraderie and this brotherhood. Have you met Travis Kelsey? And if you have, do you have a Travis Kelsey story? Uh, yeah. I mean, as like being being a small town kid and and seeing all these essentially celebrities on the field for the first time, like the first time I saw Pat Mahomes warming up or like meeting Jordan Love and just these practicing against Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith, these, just these things, these, these little blessings you get as a, as a young player meeting all these influential guys on these teams. 
the first time I met Travis was actually at tight end you um, the summer before my rookie year. And he just gets on the elevator with me as we're going up to this uh, roof. And I looked at my, my now wife and uh, I go like, that's, that's Travis Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I kind of like, you know, I'm like, Hey man, like huge fan. <laughs> but, uh, no. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the greats. Um, got to celebrate the, in, in Nashville with, with a lot of the greats, Dallas Clark, Ray Golson, oh, wow. you know, and, and soon to be's, you know, George, George was there. Um, yeah. Gronk met, I got to meet Gronk. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Dude. Good luck. Have an amazing week this week, but also keep going all season and keep making your hometown proud. It's so cool to get to know you. Tucker, on behalf of Good Morning Football and the NFL Network, thanks for joining us this morning. Tucker. Thanks, Tucker. Yeah, thank you, my Appreciate friend. You, Stay healthy. We've been exciting to watch you all season. What's it been like working with Jeff Hadley? I mean, it seems like everything that he's taught you guys and put you in the position, it, it, the results have kind of been a reflection of uh, that. I like the way he coaches, you know. He always comes to us if, to see if we like something. He's not just, uh, hey, this is what I think, this is what I want. He always get our uh, input on things and, you know, just try to make the best situations for us. I wonder what it's like to be with Coach Camp. Uh, <laughs> that's my guy. That's the, uh, that's the energy maker right there. He's a great coach. You know, he's uh, the coach that's going to try to get everything done and put us in the best situations possible. Is he ever calm? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. But is that what you need at your position, though? I mean, that is yeah, part of the no, deal, right? Yeah, uh, I feel like that's probably almost like every linebacker coach. You know, you want everybody, they want, uh, want us to go in and you know, just bust out uh, plays and just go out there and have fun. Ed, you're seven games and now to your first season in the NFL. What have you learned about playing the position now at the highest level? Uh, just going out there, just trusting yourself, not to overthink. You know, I feel like sometimes I could uh, overfocus too much and just worry about too much, too much around me. And just go out there, have fun. You know, you're here for a reason. And just, just go out there and do what you need to do. Maybe you were asked this before I got here, and so I apologize. But what? How did you guys play so well without Quay? No, it just you no know, next man up. You know, it, we had a situation where he went down, and we just got that mentality. And next man up, you know, we have to finish the game. Just make make the decision to go out there and you know, play for him. So, you had a couple sacks here last year in that Texas and then you came in. You have a couple of hard weeks. What makes you so good at getting to the quarterback? It's an off ball. Oh, I feel like my. Uh, being agile and speed, you know, be able to come around edges and you know, bend down, you know, just get to quarterback. And I feel like that's a good way they're trying to use me. So it's just something that comes part of my game. Edwin, you're from Louisiana, right? Yes. Do you know Brian Thomas Jr. at all? Do you guys ever cross paths? Yeah, we actually uh, play little league basketball, travel basketball together. So I know him and his parents real well. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a, a interesting game. Do you guys keep in touch over the years? Yeah, yeah, we still do. Uh, like I said, it's it's fun that we both made it, uh, made it to this level. So it's going to be a fun game and see who get bragging rights. So who's a, who's a better basketball player? <sighs> I'm gonna leave that up to him. I'm gonna leave that up to him. <laughs> you guys obviously faced each other in college, I'm sure. Then yes, yeah. yeah, we played uh, when we was at LSU. We played. Like I said, it was fun to see each other, us growing up and still uh, excel in our level. So it was a great time seeing each other play. Got a touchdown pass, I think, three of their last four games, something like that. What's made him, what have you seen, I guess, from him and what makes him so good and why they're targeting him? Like yeah, just, just simple as being the explosive player he's been. Uh, just like I said, everybody's got to go out there and make plays, be playmakers. Uh, <laughs> let, uh, and the coaches are going to put their players in the best position possible. So. Wes, we saw a lot of Packers fans in Brazil. Then we saw a whole lot in Nashville and a whole bunch more in Los Angeles. And I think they're going to show up in Jacksonville as well. Packers, Jaguars, time for final thoughts. All right, Weston, what's at stake? Keep the momentum going, Michael. The Green Bay Packers with a massive opportunity here against the Jaguars. The Minnesota Vikings losing to the Los Angeles Rams means the Packers could actually leapfrog them with a victory against Jacksonville. You don't know what's going to happen with Detroit, but you know what you can do with the win on Sunday. Absolutely, and you said the word momentum, and the Packers are looking for their fourth straight victory here 
And the Packers didn't have a four-game winning streak last year until beating Dallas in the wild card round of the playoffs. A chance to get that kind of a streak going with a division opponent coming up next, that is a big opportunity. Wes, who's heating up? Presented by Aurora Heated Apparel. Jair Alexander. And I'll tell you what, Mike, there was a lot of stuff going on before that game. A lot of noise being made on Sunday against the Houston Texans. It got really quiet once the passing game started. A lot of that had to do with Jair. And his task is going to be difficult again this upcoming weekend with Brian Thomas Jr. in the start that he's been off to with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jair with the sword, with everything cool that's going on with him right now. I think he's heating up for the Packers. Absolutely, and I'm going to point to special teams right here because punter Daniel Whelan is doing some special things out there. Not only is he proving himself as a holder and getting that tough snap down for the game-winning field goal last week, but whether he's punting from the goal line and flipping the field or punting from midfield and pinning opponents deep, the second-year pro is a weapon for the Packers, and he is really helping Green Bay win the field position battle. Wes, you know I like to keep it simple here, so I just say the Packers win this game if they don't turn the ball over. I've been saying it all week long. You're coming off of a three-giveaway game of your own. You need to fix that anyway. The Jaguars have only taken the ball away three times all season. Don't give them any opportunities that they don't earn and deserve, and the Packers should come away with the win. I agree with you, Michael, and for me, I think the Packers win this game if they get after Trevor Lawrence. I mean, you look at T-Law and his size, his makeup, everything you see in him, he's a prototypical franchise quarterback, and he's been getting hot again the last three weeks for Jacksonville. It's one of the reasons why they've started to turn things around. The Packers have to stay on his heels. 20 sacks so far in the season for Green Bay, 12 different guys contributing to that. Keep that pressure coming. Yeah, no doubt about it. And with that, we'll sign off on this edition of Final Thoughts. Be sure to follow all of our coverage of Sunday's game from Jacksonville on Packers.com and on all of your social media channels. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the ball game. It's a great challenge. We just focus on the task in front of us. Three seconds to go. The Packers trailing by one. Placement made. Kick to the upright. And it is. What an emotional victory here. It is hard to beat a walk-off like that. You've got to have that one-game mindset. Whether you do well or whether you are facing some adversity, you've got to treat each week as its own. Uh, got it, man! Yes. Ted Owen driven down. Hit and set! This is National Football League, so you better get ready to play your best each and every week. Do a great job preparing so you can go out and play your best. We welcome you to Florida where the Green Bay Packers take on 